This is Kat with Beataholic, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a delicate gemstone bar necklace. Now, this really popular design is probably easier than you think, but it's going to take a few tools and a few items. So, I've brought out today, we're going to be using some really tiny, tiny gemstones here, and these are some garnet dyed gemstones, and these are two millimeters by three millimeters because we want to go for that really delicate look. Now you can absolutely do this with a larger stone or a larger bead if you like, but I'm gonna go for the nice delicate touch here. So we're gonna be using our gemstones there. And then I'm also gonna show you how to complete the necklace. So I have some chain, my clasp, some jump rings there. And then the main component is going to be our wire. Now I have a little coil of my wire here that I just brought out for you. And I've already cut off a strip of it. But if you have everything ready, we're gonna go ahead and get started. The only tools that you're gonna need is you're going to need a pair of flush cutters here, a pair of round nose pliers, a pair of chain nose pliers, and if you need a pair of wire straightening pliers, and these ones have a nice nylon tip so it's not going to hurt our wire at all. And then I also have a ruler nearby to help me measure out. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chain. Now I have 16 inches of chain here because I wanna make roughly a 17 inch necklace here. So I have 16 inches, like I said. So I'm just gonna kinda lay it down here and eyeball my halfway point. There we go. Come in with my flush cutters and snip off one of those little links in the center to just give myself two pieces that are eight inches each. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside. All right, now like I was saying, I have really tiny gemstones here. So when you're working with small gemstones, you wanna go with a thin gauge wire. So I have a 24 gauge wire. Now your, you might be able to go up or down depending on the size of your gemstones. Also note that each gemstone will have a little different size hole. So you, have, you can see that I have the whole strand out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off a couple and then if one doesn't fit or two don't fit, um, I'm gonna adjust from there. But 24 gauge wires should be good for these particular beads that I'm working with here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, I have about eight inches or so of wire and I'm gonna move about an inch and a half down on one side. And now I'm gonna take my round nose pliers, kind of come in there, and what I'm gonna do is just bend it backwards, just like so. And then I'm gonna take the short side here and bend it up and over those round nose pliers, giving myself a little tiny loop at the top. And now I'm just gonna bring it across, but I've left it a little bit open there because before I close that, what I wanna do is I wanna take one side of my chain and slip on the last link there, and I want that to sit right into the loop. So I have my little wire here, and I wrapped it up and over the top, and I have it sitting out of the top of that loop. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers, and I'm just gonna grip that little loop right there. So I have the chain making sure that it's at the top there, that it's not gonna slip down. So I have my little piece of wire here, and now I'm gonna bring it across, and ever so slightly just wrap it once, and I'm gonna wrap twice, and because I think it'll look nice and pretty, I'm gonna wrap it a third time. But two is enough if that's how you want to finish it. All right, so now I have my chain and I have my little wire, and you can see why I say to have a little extra wire. It's just so that you can grip it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come onto the back side here and just snip that with my flush cutters. All right, and I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and I'm just gonna tuck that little wire in just to make sure it's nice and flush. All right, so this is what we have so far. We have one length of our chain and our nice wrapped wire loop. And by doing this, we don't need to add any jump rings. You could always do the wrapped wire loop and then use a jump ring to attach it to the chain, but this sort of eliminates that extra step and I think it makes it a bit more secure because you have a closed link to a closed link. All right, so now we're ready to start adding some of our gemstones. Now this is where you can make it as long as you like or as short as you like. It's entirely up to you. All right, so we're just gonna kinda use the other end of our wire here as a little needle, and I'm just gonna pick up those gemstones and slide them down. I know that I wanna at least do several here. 
And again, anytime you're working with, especially like in a regular gemstone, you just wanna go slow and just make sure that they're not scraping that wire because we want it to be a nice, clean piece here. And you can do this with all different kinds of wire. Uh, what you really wanna focus on is the gauge. So again, I'm using 24 gauge here for these particular beads. You could do 22, it's gonna be a little bit thicker, or you could do 26, anything finer than that, if you go up to 28 or 30, you might risk it sort of bending because that's really a very, very soft and very, very thin um, wire. All right, I think I'm gonna do a few more here actually. Let's just slide those off there. All right, and these ones are actually fitting very nicely. And you do notice that I came across a gemstone here and I'll kind of pick it up and show you. But it sort of is half cut on one side, so I'm gonna leave that one aside for this particular design. I'll use him for maybe another design. All right, I'm gonna keep going, maybe get these last two here and see where, where I'm at. There we go, I can pick up both. All right, so I think that's a nice, nice length. You know, it's maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter. All right, so you can see that you're seeing a little bit of that silver wire in between there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda rotate some of those gemstones because sometimes they wanna sit a little bit closer together. So if you just by rotating them, you can maybe get them a little bit closer. And what I'm doing on this, my left hand here, is I'm just kinda scooching those a little bit closer to create a nice, strong um, piece of wire here. Because honestly, if you wanted to, you could bend this but I wanna keep it nice and straight. Now you can see that my you know, piece of wire here is bent, but if you end up with any kinks, that's where you can use your nylon jaw pliers and you can just kind of run it along the wire just to uh, smooth it out. So this is a good thing just to kind of have on hand there. All right, so now we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did on the other side, but we wanna get it nice and close to those gemstones. All right, so we're gonna take our round nose pliers one more time and you're gonna wanna move maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an inch up from where we were last time. Um, sorry, up from the, the last gemstone there. All right, so I'm just gonna bend it back, wrap it up and over the top, and bring it across. And now I'm just gonna kinda hold that there so I can slide on the last link of our other length of chain here. And again, just kind of make sure it sits up at the top there. And then I can come in with my chain nose pliers, grip that little loop, again, ensuring that that chain is sitting on top. You can see my gemstones wobbling around and moving around a bit. But now, this is why I like to have a little bit extra of the wire so that I can bring it down and really grip it with my fingers. One of the toughest things about wire wrapping is generally your grip. So you wanna make sure that you have a nice, easy grip. All right. And I'm gonna wrap that last third time there, coming around to the back. And now coming with my flush cutters, I'm just gonna get in there as close as I can, snip that off. And then again, just kind of making sure that that little tail is tucked, just like so. All right, so there is the bar for our gemstone necklace. And let me just move these out of the way. So I'll quickly show you how to finish this here. So to one side, we're going to be attaching our little chain tag, and to the other side, I have a lobster clasp. Now because this chain is so fine, I'm gonna be using four millimeter 22 gauge jump rings. So these are gonna be really delicate. Just give it a little gentle twist there. Slip it onto the last link in our chain. There we go. And add on our little chain tag, just like so. So I have my jump ring with the last link of the chain and the chain tag. So now all I need to do is just close that up, making sure we have a nice, good closure. So that's one side completed. And now on the other side, we're just gonna take one more jump ring. Give that a nice little gentle twist. Slip on the last link of our chain. There we go. And our lobster clasp. Now you can use a different kind of clasp if you want. You can do a magnetic clasp if that's easier, 
or you can also do a spring ring that would work very nicely in this design as well. All right, so then we just open our little lobster, slip on our little chain tag, and then we are all finished with our delicate gemstone bar necklace. This is a really wonderful popular design. You can do this with any kind of bead, um, any kind of gemstone there. Just make sure that your holes are going to accommodate the gauge wire that you'd like to use for your design. You can get all of these supplies and even more by heading over to beadaholic.com.